Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. It's an interesting coincidence that the fat of lightning rods looks similar to the flying man. The idea of energy rods makes sense in connection with the depictions. However, it appears that wingsuit flying has been reintroduced, unintentionally, or intentionally. According to our lords on Wikipedia, wingsuit flying was first done in the early 1900s, but the wingsuit was depicted in 1781 and 1870, well before the modern wingsuit was invented. The first wingsuit flight attempt in 1912 by Franz Reichelt was not similar at all to the depictions from over 100 years prior. This raises some reasonable theories. One theory suggests that old wingsuits were suppressed and forgotten during the catastrophe everyone mentions and were slowly reinvented. Alternatively, the guy in the death jump video might be a fraud who posed as the primitive pioneer to instill the idea to the public that flight was just beginning development. However, this theory makes no sense when you consider that the Wright brothers took flight in 1903, but Franz Reichel couldn't figure out how to glide in the air with the wingsuit in 1912. The depictions of the flying man raise some interesting questions. For instance, what was the umbrella used for? If this was a fantasy or sci-fi depiction, wouldn't the man's suit be in the shape of a bird, which can already fly? What is the need for an umbrella when he already has a set of wings? Additionally, what's with the long green wire that goes all the way down his body? The front end of the wire goes right up through the umbrella and protruding a foot or so. It is easy to hypothesize about the involvement of the either with this suit. Finally, what's with the red cloth coming from his head? It appears to be wrapped around his head with one end connected to one of the ends of the umbrella. What is the function of that, and why would they depict it? Some other notes about the old wingsuits are that they would have been used by cartographers and may have been able to stop in midair, sort of just like an airplane. All of these observations raise some intriguing questions about our timeline. Something seems seriously wrong with it. Overall, it's fascinating to consider these depictions of the flying man and their potential implications for our understanding of the development of flight. It's possible that we may need to revisit our assumptions about the history of aviation and consider the possibility that there may have been more advanced forms of flight that were lost or suppressed for some reason. In any case, this is an area that is ripe for further investigation and exploration. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The idea of erasing something from history is fascinating yet challenging. It is impossible to erase something entirely, especially if it was significant and known to many people. Even the most powerful and wealthy person in the world cannot eliminate everything they want to remove from history. However, there is an alternative way to erase things from history that does not require violence or destruction of evidence. Instead of destroying every piece of evidence, one can repurpose it. For instance, if a powerful oligarch does not want people to know about a building that can harness and distribute energy, they could repurpose the building instead of destroying it. 
they could remove the building's significance and gradually introduce a new population to the area, erasing the memories of the previous users. By controlling education and importing new children, the population gradually forgets and the practices become meaningless. This method could be used for many things in history, such as cathedrals, spires, prayers, concerts, old palaces, deserts, obsidian mirrors, and even the entire Bible. These things may have had a much greater purpose that has been lost over time. The Bible has been repurposed throughout history to serve various interests. The text has been altered, translated, and interpreted in different ways, depending on the needs of those in power. The original meaning of the text has been lost, and it has become a tool for manipulation and control. The idea of repurposing something from history is not new. In the past, certain buildings were used for health benefits, and people spent too much time in these places. Instead of destroying the buildings, the significance of the practices among the people was slowly phased out. The buildings were repurposed as places of faith and religion in our modern sense of the term. The result was, a people that continued to practice the same traditions, but had forgotten the real reason for them. They were stuck in a loop of I believe this is working, instead of I know this is working. The erasure of history is not limited to physical objects, but also ideas and beliefs. Christianity, Catholicism, and similar religions have been decreasing in members for the past 50 plus years. It is to get people as far away from their original purposes as possible. If people from the 99% Catholic European countries learned that many of their practices had a much greater purpose, it would be the worst day for their enemies. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.